As Darren and I have been talking to a lot of high yield soybean farmers from around the country and really around the world, one of the things they talk about is reducing flower abortion. Okay, we want to keep more flowers on the plant. Easy concept, but how are we going to do that? Well, this is one of the biggest mysteries in agriculture that if anyone had the complete answer for this of, oh, we're going to have zero flower abortion from now on if you do this, well, everybody would be doing it. That person would be a billionaire because every acre of soybeans around the world would want to use that product. There isn't a magic silver bullet product like this. There are just a hundred different little things that you can do to reduce stress on the plants throughout the season. That's the big key. We have to convince that soybean plant that everything is great. We're going to be able to take every one of these flowers and bring it to a full pod and have all the nutrients we need and the plant health we need to get the job done. All right, the first thing that we talk about all the time is fertility. Take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. You can download that for free for your smartphone or your tablet and just look at how many nutrients a soybean crop needs and then ask yourself, am I fertilizing my beans for that much? Now you might say, oh, I'm over fertilizing my corn, but take a look at corn. The odds are you're not over fertilizing the corn. You've got to get your fertility levels up if you want a healthier overall crop. And potassium is a big key. That's probably the number one thing we talk to farmers about, making sure you have at least 4% base saturation K. And quite frankly, I don't think that's even high enough for really high yielding soybeans. I think on our own farm, if we're going to get to 100 bushel beans, we need that base saturation K level at at least six or seven is my personal opinion. We'll find out when we get there. But I know we've got to be over 4% base saturation K. Well, you don't want to exceed uh, seven or eight. You, once you get really don't high, you're going to run into some, you're run into some problems there too. The other thing with that potassium is you have to make sure you can deliver enough pounds. So look at how heavy your soil is. If you've got a very light, sandy, low organic matter soil, and you may say, well, I've got 4% base saturation K, I should be good. Well, you may only have 20 pounds out there per acre. So make sure that you've got plenty of pounds out there to, to be able to deliver what that crop's going to need. It's not just about potassium, it's about all nutrients. Look at micronutrients, look at everything you've got. That's a real big key. I mean, when we go beyond that, it's everything we always talk about. It's weed control, it's disease control, it's reducing compaction. How about plant growth hormones or what, what I would term natural products? Everybody's saying biological products, but I call them natural products. I mean, there are a lot of these different things that you can try on your farm. The big thing is, again, we just want to keep this plant as healthy as possible. We want to convince the plant that it's great every single day of the year and then you're going to have less you're going to have fewer flowers dropping off well if you can do something that'll in, enhance your root system that's a really big deal because when we get to the time like right now this time of year when we've got flowering soybeans and and we have this huge demand for nutrients we have to have a great root system so it starts with biological products like you were mentioning like quick roots down like bioforage in the crop uh, things like mega grow and ac97 trying to keep things growing and and keep promoting good growth within that plant. I think those things are really key. And then just avoiding making mistakes. So let's say you've got a weed control problem late. Now your soybeans are flowering. Are you going to spray that ultra blazer? Are you going to spray that cobra really late in the season when you already have flowers out there? Well, the answer is really no. You have to avoid that. So you have to try to get everything done before we get to the flowering and avoid adding more stress to the situation with things that we can control. The other big key and the reason why we're talking about this today, this late in the season, is we just encourage you don't give up on your beans too early. We see a lot of people that stop spraying insecticides, stop spraying fungicides, stop even worrying about the weeds as they get into July, as they get into August. Well, it's really important with soybeans. They make so much of their yield late in the year. You've got to stay with it. Last year on our own farm, when we had some really high yield farmers with plots on our farm, on our field day site, they were still spraying fungicide in the soybeans at R5. It might have even been R6. And I just said, whoa, you're still spraying fungicide this late? And guess what? Turned out they beat us in terms of yield. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe there was something to that. And, and certainly every area is different. Your situation might be different. I'm not saying, oh, every farmer in the country has to spray fungicide late. I'm just saying don't give up on your beans too early because they do make a lot of yield later on in the year and they do abort flowers even pretty late in the year. Well, we want to keep those flowers so you have more pods and you have more yield. And keeping weeds out of the field is definitely a key to reducing stress in your soybean fields. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.